I'm unmuting this for 0.5 seconds to let you know that this stream is going to go off without a hitch. You just wait. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Reach Out Reptiles to the Superdorf Show. You may have noticed we are in a little bit of a new setup. Um, yeah, and you may have seen the thumbnail. This is this is the couch stream now. Um, if you weren't aware, we got these really expensive. I don't really know the price, but really nice couches. What's up, ladies? I didn't jinx it. I swear. There's literally. Hold on. Okay. I'm checking your chat on the phone because I have like a computer right here. There's like six million cables running everywhere. Garrett's running late. That's why it's just me right now. Um, but yeah, how is everybody's week going? There's like a delay in the chat. So I just sit here and like talk to myself while you guys tell me your week's going. Yes, Bob Evans is correct. Smashy that like button. Smash that like button and Garrett may get here faster. He actually is bringing my food. I haven't eaten dinner yet. What's up, Justin? Family Jewels. All right, what's up, Christina? Listen, I didn't break it yet. But the night is still young, so we'll see what happens. Oh my gosh, Aurora says negative 45 wind chills. Whew, very cozy. Um, I do need a monitor to watch chat on, but it's like far away. I have this little trackpad I'm controlling with. All right, let's, let's make this a little bit easier for me. And then... Hopefully, Gary will show up. Your week is stupid, busy, but good. Yeah, I know how that is. Sometimes that's the best way to do it, to be honest. Just be busy doing good things. Like, that's that's been this week for me at Reach Out Reptiles. Making videos for you guys. Doing a lot. Switching up the live stream. Having some good conversations about content. Yeah, no kidding. We need one of those, like, 72-inch widescreens so we can, like, see ourselves in super high res. That'd be amazing. Hell, you're making tacos. Oh my gosh. That sounds amazing. Uh, Rohan Zeus says, just fed my Dwarf Motley GC Tiger. Oh, let's go. That's awesome. You like the couch stream or like the couch stream? Either way, thank you. Yes, like the couch stream physically, and I'm glad you like the couch stream. Um, we have a boatload of questions for you guys today. Unfortunately, I'm not knowledgeable enough to answer most of these, so... Um, if you guys are just joining, it's potentially just me tonight because Garrett is on his way with Nathan C., whom a lot of you guys know. Oh, there they are right now, I believe. But yeah, we'll be getting to some of your guys' questions, and then you guys can hit us with any questions you guys have in the chat. And yeah, it's just going to be a good time. So that is on the agenda today. Yada, yada, yada. Yo, thank you, Christina. If you guys haven't checked out The Reach, um, I highly recommend it. It's a good peek behind the curtain, I guess this is like what Garrett says. It's just dope behind-the-scenes content. Um, some of it's a little dramatized, but everything there has happened, and it's a good way to see more of us if you really like who we are as people. If you don't, then you can just keep watching this. What's up, Nathan? Nathan is inbound with the food. Do you like the setup? I had to riff by myself for like... Oh, it's only been four minutes? Wow, this has been a long four minutes. Wow. That must be hard for you. It is very difficult. Where do I sit, right here? I don't have enough hot air. Look at this. You don't have enough hot air? You need somebody like me. Yeah. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me zoom. <laughs> Let me full screen this. What's up, everybody? Um, I have a chat on my phone. I'll put the chat on here, but yeah, you can say hi to the people. Oh, man. Let's see what everyone what are is they saying, saying to you before I can. Who's this loser? This is not the channel I signed up for. Oh, yeah. That must be Christina. 
Oh, or Garrett Hardell Christina chatting oh. himself publicly. It wasn't me. I did do that last time. Right. I don't know if you guys know. Listen, Christina, I do know you would never say dinner. anything that mean about me ever. That's <laughs> not a possible. Look at this. Look how nice this looks. So. Oh man, we got everybody in here. Hey guys, give us a like, and uh, Garrett will stay and talk for a while. How about that? Yep. If you're watching, like the video. So, do we have any snake questions yet, or anything? We have so many snake questions today, bro. Did you answer them all? Uh, I told them. I'm, I'm not sure you're fairly educated. Oh, come on! You have literally. I know. They, okay. If they watched every video we have ever made, they would know the answer okay. to almost all Samantha the questions. Samantha Arnett asked me, and "What you are your edited thoughts?" Edited all those hey, 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 videos. I'm answering some questions for the snake people. Oh, Samantha okay. Arnett asked me, "What are your <laughs> thoughts and opinions on breeding racks, scope racks?" Honestly, I'm a horrible person, and I love keeping my snakes in really tiny enclosures. So I love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that took it too there. much? Took it there. Hey, I'm just starting at the top. Okay, so we're gonna start with this, people. Welcome. My name is Garrett. Please disregard everything that has been said so far. <laughs> we're gonna start with that. So, is it snake racks versus what? Uh, I, that was just a spitball. We can we can start with that one. That one's kind of an interesting. Let's hear it. Uh, Samantha Arnett asked, um, "What are your thoughts, opinions on breeding, breeding racks, racks grow and grow up racks, and stuff like that?" Um, I, I mean, I, they, they exist for a reason. They are very, very good for a lot of animals. I think people think they're inherently evil if uh, people put too large an animal in too small a cage. But if you ask yourself, is that really any different with an enclosure? I mean, if you're trying to keep your three-year-old American alligator in a 10-gallon aquarium, that's a nice enclosure. It's not a rack. Is that okay? Of course it's not. It's context, really. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the racks are great. Uh, they're definitely better quality and lesser quality ones. Um, it kind of depends on the species that you're going for. What we are doing with Superdorves, we literally just filmed a, a thing today because we have a whole wall of new enclosures that Nathan built for us. Thanks, Nathan. You're welcome. <laughs> Nathan's the man. Yeah, he actually flew out here and, and volunteered... I think he, he thought he was coming out to watch uh, another clutch of Karampas hatch, but instead we just put him to work all week, and we're like, they're almost hatched, Nathan. They're almost hatched. Keep working but on those cages, buddy. In the meantime, cages, you guys should see the snake room, though. It looks so good. It's really cool. So anyway, my, my point is, like for my snakes, meaning super dwarves, uh, the racks are not all that great. The, so we're kind of like retiring most of our rack systems, with the exception of the babies. The fresh-hatched babies... It makes sense. I know it's like fun to set them up an enclosure and stuff, but if they don't know how to eat a captive diet yet, those things can be a distraction. So I personally feel you need to set them up in something that it gives them the greatest chance for success for transitioning from whatever their instincts are telling them to whatever you're actually feeding them, what your system and routine is. Can you read that? <clears throat> so we'll set them up, probably. Hold on. Um, We'll set them up in a, in a little rack to start. Bye, Aiden. Have a good night. Bye. We're all wrapping up for the day. Okay. Uh, except for us, we're just getting started. So people are hitting we'll, we'll start them off the there, way. and then what we're doing is we're we're going to enclosures as soon as they're past that like six to eight meal mark, they're going to start getting upgraded. The good thing is I love my Freedom Breeder racks as a product. They just aren't working out for the the super doors the way I want, you know, and without. Uh, like an arboreal feature or whatever, like I begged them for the one time, they just don't they just don't really work out. But they'll probably be perfect for my house snakes. Really, Ashley yeah. is recently I've heard she loves those house snakes right. so much she can't stop hearing about them. She doesn't... <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the house snakes like you know we have FB forties or whatever. Oh, thanks, Nathan. They're actually as long or possibly even shorter than the whole rack. They're not an arboreal species. Yeah, you can you totally it. set it up and everything. Oh, this is for the old man thing. Do I have to get my reading glasses or whatever? Oh, what'd you get me? Hold on, guys. So. If you guys. This is my dinner. <laughs> anyway. Yep. Brisket this sandwich. This is why Garrett was late. Philly brisket Garrett sandwich. Garrett was late on my behalf. You. Yep. 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 Can't hate on me too much. Everyone's talking about the All vlog. Right. The reach. Do you want to go through? Some people are asking some questions. Starting some conversating real quick. Do you want to go through and. I think Duran asked what temperature it is here. It's not. It's chilly, but it's not like brutal. No, it's, it's still below freezing outside, though. Yeah, yeah, still. Which is too cold for me. Yeah, it's pretty cold. So, yeah, the the hills are saying check out uh, MJ and Matt Summers ROR vlog videos. Matt Summers and uh, 
the MJ Exotics uh, cartel both have videos on there, which is pretty fun. So, pretty cool. Bob says it was 50 today. So, that was the high. It was definitely That's warmer. It had been below zero last week. And Hadley anymore. just got back from Panama. So, she timed that exactly right. Mm-hmm. We're all like, oh, thank God. It's 50 degrees. It's so warm now. I was outside in a t-shirt. It felt great. Hadley comes strolling in with like a crazy tan <laughs> from just sitting on the beach the whole time. Crazy. So, Aurora says, come on, Freedom Breeder. We need tall tubs. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I don't know if, like, the whole tub being tall would work either. I think you almost have to have, like, you know how, like, birds have their cage and then they have a playground on top? I think you almost need, like, an enclosed playground. Like, you could use the same racks if they had, like, an enclosure on top. Mm-hmm. And once we started talking about it, I've seen people build their own. And they're they're pretty cool, but a commercial system would be great. So, yeah. Uh, let's see... Josh has an 18 by 18 by 36 Exoterra bio setup. Would that be a good hurt first home for one of your babies? That's funny. That's exactly what Nathan used, right? No, what did you use? Mine was a 36 by 36 by 18. So oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. 18 by you're saying 18, 18 by 18 by 36, and yours yeah. was an 18 by 36 by 36. Yeah. So, but I mean, honestly, like if that was all set up 18 inches high, you're talking for like a hatchling? Yeah, absolutely. That would be, that would be great. His was a full 36 high. So it's like two of yours stacked on top of each other and they definitely utilize it all, oh, wouldn't you say? Yeah, up and down. Yeah, they love it. So um, if you can give them the higher ones, yeah, but 18 by 18 by 36 would be great. If you're getting a really, like Nathan here has karampas. So if you're getting something really small like that, they'd be good enough for, no big deal. you know, Easily a year. Easily a year. So, Um, are you going to be selling the enclosures in racks? Uh, I might sell them here locally, but it's not like my company that's building them. We designed them. Oh, I think that you upgrade from. Sorry, I missed that last part. Like the ones that you're getting rid of, the ones you're not. Oh, the other racks. No, we can already. Those are going to be your new house snake. House yeah. So the old retic cages will now be house snake cages. So they'll be a little bit big. For the Wait, they're actually going to be house snake? I, that's what I'm thinking. Wow. Yeah. There's mansions for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I mean, that's kind of the point, right? Like those, mm-hmm. you just said, those are mansions for them. They would yeah. be great for house snakes. So, yeah, if you size down your animals, then all of a sudden the enclosures are cool. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Um, I just got back from dinner. I was drinking coffee the whole time. I got to go take a leak. All right. I think Nathan should jump in here with you. Nathan, do you want to answer a question? Come on, buddy. Do you want Check to, out these you want new to couches. stop by and grab uh, Laura Thompson's little Calatoa? Yeah, um, yeah. 21036, yeah. yeah. So, Nathan, let's interview you for a second. Do you mind? Uh, how long have you been watching Reach Our Reptiles? <laughs> I already know the answer to that first question. Uh, not the watching part, the do you mind part. <laughs> yes, he does mind, but let the people know. How long have you been, like, how long have you been part of this community? Well... It wasn't that long because I was out of the hobby for probably 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. So I just got back into it. Let's see, I've had my Krampus for two years. You got back in on Krampus? That was an accident. Everybody knows that story, but yes. (laughs) I just like, I just kind of thought like you had some stuff and then you like suddenly you're like, oh, Krampus. And then it was cool that you were in Krampus, but it wasn't like, oh, this is my first entry point back into the hobby in 20 years well yeah i didn't know i was just trying to, my wife didn't want snakes and oh sure and i'd been watching garrett's videos for i don't know i guess three years before because i think that's how long i was on the you've list you've been here longer than i have yes and i because i and i didn't know that necessarily i kind of just imagined that like everybody suddenly showed up when i showed up and <laughs> there's all these wonderful people that want to like you brought everyone in but <laughs> no that. but i i went back and was like watching a really old um, video for whatever reason and I saw one of your comments and I was like Nathan like Nathan's been here for a minute yeah well I, I stumbled across Garrett's channel just happenstance you know just mm. and I didn't even know what a super dwarf was and I was like well this is really cool because I like retics but they're obviously too big yeah so when I saw that I was like oh this is interesting and he presented it in such a great way that I just kept on watching his videos yeah, and I just got more into it more into it and it just happened that one of his videos was about Karampas and 
He, You're and, like, oh, you those know, are cool. Well, you know, he said um, in his previous videos, he's like, yeah, if you ever want to get on a list or something, or, you know, email us and get on mm. the list. So when I came across that Krampa video, he's like, it's the smallest locality. It gets five to seven, super tank. You know, it was basically like Perfect. the most ideal snake you could possibly think of. So yeah. that's what I did. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember him saying that. So I emailed him. And said, that's crazy. That's you know, crazy. No idea it was an important snake. You or, just kind of like kinda hit the ground running on it unintentionally. Drop. There you go. There you go. Uh, that is it, there's, Laura's snake. Just eight. It's it's super fuzzy, but close your eyes, Tom. Yeah, you have to like cover fuzzy. the eyes. Then it'll stop looking for the focus. Come on. There you go. It actually worked. Whoa, there you yeah. go. You can see it. She's going in. The, going in the shed. <laughs> Sorry. Super big belly group. It's good. All right. I see how you guys. You guys the, want the attention. No, 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 no. The camera. The camera, the camera is so good it. at picking up eyes. It focuses on eyes that we have. Like as soon as we cover it, it's like gone. But uh, yeah, that's super cool. So that's how you got into um, super dwarfs and dwarf ticks and reach out reptiles and all that. Yeah, well, I emailed him to get on that list and didn't think anything mm. of it. And it was three years later that he texted me out of the blue. and It's like, hey, you want your Krampus? <laughs> Who the hell are you and why are you on this Krampus list? That's, and so, that's so funny. That's so, so funny. Yeah, he gave me a call and that's how I got into it. So. And when did you... I got like, when did, I'm, so, I'm personally curious about this. This is not like... Uh, I think the audience, whatever, cares about this much information. No one cares but as much as when you. did you meet? When did you meet Garrett for the first time? For the first time, I actually went to. This was before I had the Karampas. Oh, we got a super chat by the way. I, we'll I um. Oh man, Nathan's nope. a really good super I, we, chat. He's camera. been on here. He went on here. I, it was a big ask. I'm not gonna make him dance. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's not happening. But um, I met Garrett at an October Tenley. It was the last Tenley before COVID. Oh really? So okay. I I didn't even have a snake yet, but I went and met him just because I just want to say hi, um, and I literally just talked to him for like two seconds. I was with my brother who lives in Chicago. Oh yeah. I said you know, hey, I'm Nathan. I asked him a stupid rookie question about one of the snakes. You know, like, hey, how big is this? And he goes, <laughs> yeah, that big. And was that just before like, or after he yeah. was like, hey, the crump is already? <laughs> no, this was before. He's like, oh no, this I'm sending my crump. This is this guy who just <laughs> asked this question. <laughs> Uh, luckily, he didn't remember me from the stupid question at Tinley, but uh, yeah, oh, he doesn't remember. If you asked a stupid question last week, you probably wouldn't remember. It. <laughs> so, Even if it was a good question, oh, that's that's true. Any question, yeah. So yeah, he didn't remember me from that Tinley, and then he called me out of the blue just to figure out who I was yeah. and why I was on this list. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, shoot, man, I appreciate you being on here. <laughs> anytime. <laughs> anytime. Oh, really? <laughs> Okay, Come Nathan said back. he's down to be on here anytime. All right, we got a super, uh, chat, super chat. Hold on. Oh. Who is it? Uh, Spooky Tuesday. Spooky Tuesday. Hold on, let's get our music on. Nathan, you can dance in the background. No one will know, but I'll know. Oh, where is it? Hold on, let's restart it. What? It's, it's kind of weird dancing in like oh a couch. Gosh. Yeah. I know. You're just like. Right. Mm. Kind of is like more relaxing when you're on a, a brown leather couch. Let's so he's grabbing a pure Kiowati that I hatched back in 2020. Is it possible to get a male that's unrelated to the bloodline? It's possible. Not like today. Not right now. Um, the the pure bloodline stuff is definitely like waiting list stuff. As soon as we hatch them out, they, they basically sell out. So I think I know the female you're talking to. Congratulations on that pickup. She's, she's a looker. Um... I believe you're waiting on paperwork or something. The guys that had it lost the paperwork from us, but it was from us. So that's really cool. Uh, if you want to get on a waiting list for Kiowatis, then you can do that. And um, that was from uh, the Doc Murdoch bloodline. So you would want a different bloodline than that. So anyway, yeah, you could definitely get on a waiting list for it. The way to do that would be to email info at reachoutreptiles.com. And go ahead and, and go that route and see what you can get. Um, yeah, but it's definitely possible. It's just a matter of getting on the list and like the pure locality stuff. Like I said, any of the pure localities are kind of cool. They're very collectible. Got to catch them all, right? Well, and Brian, everyone's trying to build them up, especially diverse bloodlines. Some of them don't have very diverse bloodlines. But the Kiowatis, you can get unrelated stuff. Brad Dunn wants to smoke. He says, Thomas, you look really awkward. Mm. Why I just I feel like I look comfortable because I'm very comfortable right now. Yeah, he's just naturally an awkward person. So. Oh, a little bit. He only looks awkward, but that's actually his comfortable and natural no, state. No, it's 
Oh man, you're <laughs> kind of like I bites. look like a jerk. That's true. Well, yeah, I, get, I mean, I guess I am a jerk. You're kind of a jerk. <laughs> that was my battery. What is that? The Wi-Fi network does not appear to be connected to the internet. Oh, that's That'd be exciting. Bad. That would be bad for this. Um, let's. It seems like it's working. Oh, you got another super chat. All right. Well, let's just pray. I don't know why my phone said something. What is it? Oh, he's probably talking about my dance. A moves. bigger playlist on this one. Yeah, I don't really know how to dance. Four fifty nine. Ah, he also has a thirty six eighteen thirty six put together. Didn't know if that would be too big to start him out. Uh, nope. He that's what he started. His baby Karampas were the smallest uh, super dwarfs. And he said they were perfect in the 36, 36, 18. Christina so you, Hill says, wow. Well, number 459. Let's see if it's still here. Let's see. All right. After you grab that, let's murder some of those questions Wait, on the. Uh, five, six? Patreon. Oh, right. um, hold on. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Let's see if it's still here. Let's see. 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 let us Listen, hanging around Garrett will give you a thick skin. You could say pretty much anything. Unless your name is Christina. <laughs> I don't get offended. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Christina. We know, you know I love you. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I'm going to give a shot on these questions, but there's no guarantee that I'll give you anything useful. Do we have any non-feeder invertebrates? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so here's four, five, nine. This is actually going to be a sibling to Laura's, which means that he also oh. ate and also is kind of in blue, so a little darker than normal. But there he is. He's cute. Very curious little guy. This would be a really good, if you're talking about, hey, first Superdorf pet, this is an awesome one. Like, you get all the tiny bloodlines at a really affordable price. That's from Clutch 36. For I'm just waiting for Christina's response. To be honest. Um. Hey, Josh Wallace wants to see twenty one oh four five nine. Wait, we already saw. Okay, that was one you just pulled out, right? Yeah. Okay, one three six. Well, I just happened to look at the one on the question that he wanted to see. Uh never mind. Just pull out something cool. <laughs> Christina, that's you're dang straight on that. We do have a bro sis situation. Um, all right, Cody Palmer. I would love to tell you what I thought on considering Turnates, Bells, and Hamaheras and other other localities. But uh, Nathan, do you have any opinion on that? Uh, what was the question? Thoughts on people considering Turnates and. Phil's, Homa Harris, and other localities being a dwarf. I don't, I don't have any opinion on that because I don't have enough knowledge to you. even base an opinion. So. All right. Thank you for your participation. You cover your eyes. Here's yeah, a really go. pretty platinum anorak. Oh, no, you had it. That I love. <laughs> little yearling girl. Pretty cool. Thoughts on considering other localities dwarfs that are not from that, like, kind of scientifically recognized islands? I mean, you know, here's the thing. You've got thousands, tens of thousands probably, of localities of retics across the world. So they're all going to be unique. They're all going to be interesting. Uh, the terms dwarf and super dwarf were straight up marketing terms used to describe some island races that are now considered genetically distinct scientifically. They have their own subspecies and stuff like that. Um, and they were calling them dwarf and super dwarf before they knew what localities they were. So now we've got people even on this stream. Hey, we're talking about Karampas. We're talking about Kiowatis. Those all have different, you know, different physically distinguishing features, different stuff like that. Um, and it's great to know what those localities are and not just have to call everything a super dwarf. So I think to, to have a locality and just try to like, like, I guess the question is, why are, you, why are you trying to call it a dwarf or a super dwarf in the first place? Why not just say, hey, check it out. Here's a Homohera. Here's a Ternate. Here's a Philippine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then define what they are. And I, I think it's because of like a, you know, a marketing trend for dwarf and super dwarf. It's like 
So the idea is like the terms dwarf and super dwarf hide other information. That's why when we sell something, like we'll give a hat certificate that's like, this is 42.38%. Like, I'm not going to say I knew that, but I was going to like bring that point up. Yeah, 9.38% oh, cool jam pay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we give all the background information. So you just label it because it's like, for example, this would be a Superdorf Platinum Annery. You know, but we have all the, the background information on to tell you which localities those are, those are and stuff like that. So I guess, I don't know. First of all, I wonder why they're doing that. Uh, secondly, they are not studied as far as like, you know, more work is yet to be done to see if those are in any way distinct from the mainland species. Right now, those would be, you know, considered lumped in with uh, the mainland stuff. They're they're not studied. They're not they're not proven to be genetically distinct in any of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I don't know. I uh, I th I think that the that there's room to like evolve and change. But here's the thing: uh, if your definition of dwarf and super dwarf is just based on the fact that like original imports were smaller, then yeah, you could maybe call some of those dwarf or super, probably not super dwarf, but dwarf, um, if you wanted to do that. But then you would also be opening up to kind of like the stuff that we already know and look down on as far as like, well, then can anything genetic stripe and from the genetic stripe bloodline be considered a dwarf or a super dwarf? Mm. They're probably from Madura, which is another island. The original imports seem to be a little bit small. Uh, people slapped that dwarf label on and ran with it, even though they didn't know that they were from Madura. The reason why we say probably is because there's been some genetic stripes turned up there. Um, you know, some of the original Orange Ghost stripe stuff, the original Phantom stuff seemed to be a little small. Heck, the original Titanium male was pretty small, wild caught. Um, you know what I mean? And a lot of people wanted to call those dwarf to make it easier to sell those to other people. I guess without having to educate them, they couldn't educate them because they didn't have like locality information on that stuff. So are you just trying to sell the snakes to people by adding an additional label? Or does the animal in its own right have the ability, like take take away the- Super chat, as a, going on a roll, man. As a dwarf and super dwarf breeder, the best thing that could happen with the dwarf and super dwarf industry, The, this is probably a controversial opinion, but you guys ask, so you guys Those get it. a lot of your opinions. The best thing, and I all we do are the dwarf and super dwarf retakes, but the best thing that could happen to this industry is if you just took those terms away. Mm. Just take them away and let people learn about the different localities of retakes and decide which ones are best for them. And if people are working hard to, you know, kind of like perfect a bloodline, like in the dog and cat world, four generations in, and you have a new bloodline. I don't think anyone's that far in on stuff yet. You know, uh, we're like right on the cusp of that. And that's when you consider something like domesticated or a bloodline, your own bloodline. You can't just hatch something and say, yeah, you know, whatever line, you know, animal or whatever. Um, I suppose, unless you're working with the wild cots and you do that and you're just differentiating. But why add extra labels to try to like de-educate people and sell stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like why not It's putting the market more... first and your money first over actual yeah. education and like, preservation. It's it's unfortunate that these had to be I mean you got to give them some kind of a term, but it's unfortunate that they called them dwarf and super dwarf and hid all that locality data in the beginning. So now that we have them becoming popular again, we have a lot of people that are like, "Oh, me too. I want to play. Let's hide information or you know, assume information we don't have or whatever, so they can kind of play too in the way that it originally was. We're I, I would rather see the I would rather see the industry evolve away from that to where more information was going out, not less. We got Rob is creeping it real. The man, the What's man. What's up, buddy? Yeah. Um, I think we should jump into some of these questions. Um, do it. So we have six million next week. Let's get through these little rapid fire. -ish. What do you think, Rob? We're already Comment halfway below. through the stream, man. It's been, yeah, it's, it moves fast on these couches. Time just moves right faster. Um, all right, JC Hill, especially when I come in late, which is uh, 
Yeah. Christina Hill. Hill. And James. Yes. Um, have Aaron Metcalf's Super Crispies hatched yet? What was the outcome? Not yet. She's just determined to ask on literally every piece of content. <laughs> every interactive. Because she was asking on MJ's podcast. If you haven't seen that, you can go back and watch that. Every fun. opportunity. Yep. Hitting the refresh button. Exactly. All right, Samantha Arnett asks, what changes would you like to see from the next generation of reptile breeders compared to how it's done now? What would you hope that the people would improve on? Mm, 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 mm. Like reptile breeders in general. Um, you know, I, I would love to see people, like all of us, the interesting thing about the reptile industry is like what connects us is our love of snakes. But if you go to a reptile show and you see everybody there, there's very little else that they have in common. Mm-hmm. Used to not be that way. It used to be like you could pick a reptile person out from across the street. You know what I mean? But now you really can't. And anybody has can have reptiles, you know? From rich to poor, young to old, you know, male, female, any kind of like walk and look in life. So originally uh, it was all like one type of person with one type of thinking and one thing doing it. I think that if we can respectfully challenge each other, then uh, we can actually improve the industry. And so because we have such a diverse um, industry and crowd of people that all work outside of reptiles, if they come into reptiles, and instead of, it's kind of like, ask not what America can do for you, but what you can do for your country, right? You know what I'm saying? Taking responsibility. Yeah, it's like, come in and what can you bring? You have a particular set of, of talents or uh, resources, uh, experiences and knowledge that you have learned in whatever those all those other areas of your life are. So here where we meet in the middle, let's bring all that to this new industry. Instead of just, you know, vertically growing one step on top of the next, thinking, hey, you know, last generation of cage was like this. Let me fix a few problems and move it up. Maybe we, we can have more horizontal input where we're like, look at the aerospace tech, you know, technology that they've just come up with. Hey, check this out. Can we bring that over here? So there are certain um, industries that are doing that. The businesses that are doing that are the most fun and the most dynamic. So you think there's maybe like a trickle down effect from the three people out of the 150 or 1,000 people, three out of every thousand or whatever are doing something really cool and passing it on to everybody else. You think you wish more people... Yeah, it's just kind of like, well, I did it when I was, a, I did it this way when I was a kid, mm-hmm. and now I've like added this one more thing, or this had this new idea, and I'm and I'm building that way. What I want to see is there are so many people get involved in the industry. The next generation of reptile keepers will be much, much larger than the current one, because mm-hmm. new people are getting into it. And if you're hooked on reptiles, you're not leaving. Sorry, you know what I'm saying? But like new people are coming into it all the time. So bring with you new life, new vitalization. So so we need to do that. But in order to do that, we as a society have got to learn to accept people that think differently than us. That has got to be the hardest thing for people. It's just like, oh, you're wrong, or you're this, or you called yourself an expert, so whatever, you know, and... And it's very butting heads. Oh, it's just everybody thinks that their way is right, even if they only have two or three snakes. You know what I'm saying? They're going to challenge. Why can't we share our experiences, try to mm-hmm. things differently, learn, grow? Um, that's what I would like to see out of the, the next generation. But it will only be that will only actually be feasible if we can actually learn to realize, like, look, we really don't – we argue with each other because we're passionate about things. That's what it comes down to. So when you see a lot of – arguing and stuff it's just two people that are really passionate about things the the problem is people's egos and personalities and immaturities get in the way during those arguments making them like wiping out any chance for them to be constructive Mm -hmm. so yeah if we can set that stuff aside and be like look someone's trying something new good for you keep the creativity and the passion set aside you you have to yeah you've got to you know what I'm mean? saying? Like, mm-hmm. if if all we do is watch, it, it feels like sometimes there, there are people in the industry or some, maybe it's a little bit of all of us in the industry, we sit there and we look for what everyone else is doing wrong so that we can jump on them. Maybe to make ourselves feel better, look better? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you sit there and consume content that you hate? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you really don't like this person or it's what they're confusing. doing or whatever, like I feel like people like like scout out and hawk, 
you, you know, like a hawk for like, mm-hmm. oh, what's someone doing that I don't agree with so I can jump all over them? You know what I'm saying? And, and I think if each of us took our expertises and, and tried to offer them to the industry instead of just, you know, shouting out everybody else when they did it in a way that we think is wrong, you know, if we could get together, I mean, call the person, talk to them. Why do you think this? Why do you think that? You know what I'm saying? And, and hash it out. We don't. Mm. It's like it's like drivers on the highway. You know, you feel like you're a nice person in real life, but behind a steering wheel and behind the windshield, you can be a total jerk because you're probably not going to see that mm. person. And when it's somebody like Rob, and they get out of their vehicle and they walk over to you, you better all of a sudden the running. situation changes. Away. And you're like, you're oh my gosh. Away. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, uh, there's going to be, uh, you know, consequences to my actions. You mm. know what I'm saying? And we do that behind a computer screen too. I think we should work together in that stuff. If someone says something that you don't like or you don't understand, ask them about it and see where they get that. You yeah. Know? Damn. That was... Uh, Solved the issue. Real short and sweet answer. You're, yeah, you're welcome, future of uh, reptile solid. industry. Yeah, I think we need to clip that and throw that on Instagram. We'll, we'll get in on it. Yeah, we'll just tell them to make it 15, that was like, 15 seconds and make it for a For somebody who's That'll not totally like, work. necessarily in the reptile industry, that made a lot of sense regardless of what industry you are. Do you guys like how Thomas considers himself not in the reptile industry? When out of all the... How many people Mentally, are in the chat feel, right now? I don't feel there like... There are 105 there. people watching right now. And I'll bet you that most of them do not get their paycheck from people who buy reptiles, and you do. That's true. You are a major part of the reptile industry. With that, industry, we got a super job. My friend. <laughs> get right. over all it. Right, all right, I'll accept Stop that. Stop fighting I'll accept it. That. <laughs> Let's hear it. J. Hill Jr. Ganya Gahaka. 99% chart. I pronounced that correctly. Thanks to all the support, U.S. ARC, the N. See, North Carolina Tegu ban was shelved. Remember to contact your representatives to so, stop the Lacey Act Amendment. So these guys have been using Super Chats for probably the most noble thing re- way that you can do it to alert sure. people in their community of local things going on. And because of that, a lot of people with, like Florida, the, the state has a lot of issues with invasive species of all kinds. Invasive and non-native species and stuff like that. And uh, their solutions to it legally don't solve the issues but cause a, you know a secondary wave of problems for people and animals alike so intelligent legislation is the way to go this one was one that where unintelligent legislation was shelved put off for now that's a very good idea let's figure out how we can do this in a way that works and you guys working with your local stuff is great so thank you to you guys for your super chat and your efforts and yeah uh there's they've this has been going out. I've talked to Phil about this several times. Ever since the Lacey Act edition of several animals, um, the reptile industry won in Supreme Court to say that the Lacey Act doesn't have any jurisdiction of interstate stuff, only in and out of the country. Okay. You know, the Lacey Act is a really crazy, messy law because it ha- it's a huge federal law with major consequences for anyone that breaks it. But it's very poorly and and poorly written and by people who are both uneducated and biased. So that's a bad recipe for America in every circumstance. Yep. So um, what they've been trying to do ever since, like I remember they did this with the COVID relief. Hey, businesses are shutting down. People are out of work. Let's give them all some money. And then a bunch of that in that bill that was passed, a bunch of the money was uh, delegated to preventing interstate travel of reptiles and things like that. There's another one going on like that. So I, I've talked with Phil. There's definitely something you need to stay on top of and talk to the representatives. But you have to realize that every time a, bass, a, 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 a bill is passed, there are a bunch of special interest groups of all kinds of random things trying to get money. Because usually when they pass bills, money is spent. You know, So in that one, it was like COVID relief. They spend enough money for every... Uh, I, you guys can fact check this. This will be way off. But it was basically, it was like every person in America can have 600 bucks to help with COVID relief. But the bill cost enough to give everyone $6,000. So the rest of that money goes into special oh, interests. There was, like, there was like, let's repopulate the Gulf of Mexico fish management, something, something. There's all kinds of things. And it's like, here's the thing. Maybe Gulf of Man- Mexico needs fish management. But you need to write a law about that. You don't take a COVID relief bill and stuff a reptile... Like, 
let's address the issue. You know what I mean? Congress, You'll, if you want to fight about it, bring it up. Let's do it. Let's make a, a That's like putting a, a sewing machine in a car. Like, Bill. I'm sure someday somebody could use it. But Yeah, it's just like, you know, don't, don't hold people up from getting relief from, you know, a pandemic that's going Bill. through because you're a special interest group that doesn't think people should have reptiles as pets. That doesn't even make any sense. So, I don't know. Problems with America today. All right. We're going, uh, we're going man, this you're is going definitely you're going me picking, picking at everyone right. else's Natalia issues. Natalia like says, you never Thomas do. is stockled syndrome hasn't kicked in yet. Any day now, he will sympathize with his captors. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly. true. This is true. Uh, exactly. They're having a little bit. I could see them having a conversation, the people in the chat. Yeah. They're talking about um, any way that they can make their enclosures like where the animals are from. Do you uh, have any recommendations for that? Any uh, weather apps? Do you depends know? on where your animals are from. Yeah, I mean, all you can do is research the, the local habitats. So, like, one thing that we noticed about super dwarves and stuff is, like, their temperature requirements are slightly different than mainlands. You know what I'm saying? Different hardiness factors, uh, dietary things, slightly different than mainlands. And if you understand that these animals come from islands, it starts to, to kind of backfill some of that information. You know, so... so Figure out where they're from, but if your animal, you have to look at not just like the region on a map. That's kind of the problem. You have to look at the microclimate, because someone might come from a hot, steamy jungle, but it's different on the forest floor than it is at the top of the mm. canopy. There's within like in that exact same, yeah, you can look at the exact same GPS coordinates and have eighteen different sub, you know, microclimates going up. So Bob Evans said Thomas's enclosure has been enriched by the addition of a couch. <laughs> Do you like your enrichment, uh, Thomas? I love it. I haven't utilized it as much as I should. Yeah. Well, that would mean you're not working. So exactly. Good. Well, or I'm you can stay late to sit on the couch breaks. if you want. This is true. <laughs> um, all right, Samantha so Arnett again on our um, post. Yeah. Uh, and if you guys are wondering where we're getting these questions that are not from the chat, we put a post on a Patreon. Community. We put a post on on YouTube community tab. And then, yeah, you can also just comment, and there's a good chance I'll see it. But that's a good spot to get your questions in. I mean, there's so many comments going so, through. We stopped for the super chats. We can't possibly. Get and to I everyone. can only stop. Garrett and I see that you have a lot, a so you better yes. go fast. I'm gonna yep. rapid fire the rest. You better go fast. You I'll, better go. I'll fast. go so fast. Watch this. This is gonna be. Do you funny. have a plan or things you keep on yes. in case of emergencies oh. for your reptiles, i.e., power outages? Oh yes, we have a generator. Moving on. Sweet. Jordan Carpenter asks, "Will you show Miss Piggy? It's killing me waiting to get her shipped." Enclosure should be finishing up and shipping this week or next. I have to go get it. What's the next question? Uh, which of Eric Lee's amazing snakes would you like to have if they were available? Oh, like anything at his collection? Yeah, it would definitely. Anything. It would definitely be one of his pure locality animals for sure. Oh yeah. Any specifics? Uh, I mean, I probably would take my jams back. <laughs> oh man, Garrett says he would take his jams back. If you didn't hear that, um, man. We got through a lot of those questions. Slow down, Garrett. Uh, what? Hold on. I'm seeing my name pop up a lot in the chat. <laughs> what do we got going on here? Uh, You're being fed in your enclosure today. Oh, uh, we are watching Thomas's training session live. Great value. I'm so glad I provide that kind of value. Garrett turns a six-inch pool into like a 12-foot deep pool as far as like the depth of conversation. It's impressive. My target, um, my computer or my camera. So this is Miss Piggy, right? This is Miss Piggy. Oh man, this is Miss Soggy Piggy. She thinks she's gonna eat. Oh, you got a lot of hey, cords here. We appreciate your questions. We love it. All right, what's the next question? Here's Miss Piggy. Um. All right. Do you have any advice? It's a two year old and Jayden, dwarf female snow. John and Jaden on Patreon asked, What advice do you have for someone on a budget that wants to get into breeding SD retics with his kids? In other words, what do you recommend on breeding if you can't afford a $1,000 snake, but your kid loves reptiles and wants to have a career of some sort? He wants to study herpetology when he goes to college. Uh, house snakes. Start with house snakes. Breed those. They're way cheap. You can get a lot of cool morphs and very inexpensive things the cages are smaller the food requirements are less they're a super budget friendly snake and then when you are wildly successful and you know all of your systems you know business wise and you are, have become very good at converting baby snakes to cash you know then you will have more than a thousand dollars to spend on super dwarfs i would say super dwarfs are like a great i mean they're 
They're tiny, they're cute, they're fun. They're, they're definitely not a first snake. They're like an intermediate snake. So, you know, especially if as like a breeder or whatever, um, you know, like I would assume that you're keeping pets long enough to become really educated and enthusiastic about the pets that you're keeping to want to breed and proliferate them. There's nothing wrong with having, uh, you know, pets. And if they're interested in herpetology, having a bunch of one kind of snake might not actually be the way to go. You might be better off forgetting breeding altogether, take your thousand dollars and buy 10 $100 animals, like from a herpetological standpoint, something that's underappreciated in the pet trade can be scientifically very interesting. You know, if anything else, you could build one of those barn build type enclosures like we did and catch something from your backyard and let your kids learn about how precious, you know, the thing that is right there that they're overlooking on a daily basis really is. Sweet. Solid answer. On I'd that. start underappreciated. And Lauren build Walker up. wants to know what space in the facility is this? Such a nice backdrop. Um, this is this is the museum far corner of the building. If you've yep. ever been here, but yeah, this is the future. Future. So if you look cool that spot. way, this is this wall right here is the the front of our building, kind of the back of the building, based on where the road is. But this is the entrance of Reach Our Reptiles. And if you go to the back of the building, that's going to be like our wall-to-wall, floor-to-ceiling, giant walk-in enclosure for our mainlands. Um, and then uh, we're going to have, like, you know, dwarf and super dwarf locality stuff here. Sweet. So. Christina Hill, your email is 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 coming. <laughs> we need to take some pictures after uh, the live stream today. Okay. <laughs> for the snake names. Oh, Speaking good. Speaking of which, uh, in about 10 minutes, we'll put Get on him, Christina. Don't let him hit it. Next hey, question. You get on Garrett, because Garrett is a hard man to pin down. <laughs> um... Duran wanted to know, I know you have plans for some tall enclosures. What is the best, uh, what's the best way to heat an enclosure with a lot of height? Uh, insulate it really well and then just have like basically in theory, you're bringing a light source generally from the top and shooting it down and then have multiple perches and basking levels where the heat can hit and warm different surfaces on the way down. So your gradient would be top to bottom, not left to right. Hot at the top, cool at the bottom. And you can let the animal thermoregulate that way. We're getting a lot of people in the chat talking about the fact that they think it's funny that Superdorves were their first snake or reptile. I think that's, I, I, honestly, my, my well, I say my second snake was a jamp, but it's not my second snake. It was my second exotic animal. I had many, many, many snakes that my parents didn't know about that I caught outside and kept under the bed. But uh, they're a great snake. They're a very good snake. Mine was wild caught, which brings a whole other plethora of issues. I remember having to worm it and all that kind of stuff. Stuff that you don't have to worry about today. They are a great snake for someone who really wants to like be dedicated and apply themselves to that. So I just think that um, there are very, very many completely underrated animals that are, that are awesome you know, for less money. So and and if you're if you're talking about introducing your kids to herpetology, I don't know that you want to zero in. Now, if you want to introduce them to business, then do it. But I would also then not spend my own thousand dollars. I'd write a business plan, have my kids go out, you know, do some bootstrapping, raise some money, you know, with investors so they can learn that process. Then, heck yeah, man, super door. You're talking about killing a whole flock of birds with one stone. Well, that's exactly. the way we like to do it. Next question. Uh, also. John Banks is in the chat, said, thank you for answering my question. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. We do appreciate it. Um, Alan Jones asked, have you spoken with anyone like Dr. Ben Morrow about genetic sequencing? Each known locality would be very interesting to see how distinct they are genetically. It seems as though there'd be enough interest from the community to financially support the effort. Uh, there are already studies going on uh, about, you know, in the same way that they've recently reclassified a lot of boa constrictors. Uh, the scrub pythons have been worked on. Green tree pythons have been worked on. They are currently working on reticulated pythons, which might have huge implications. Like, do you realize, for example, we were talking about Lasiak. Reticulated pythons are banned from import and export, right? Uh, and they're trying to shut them down from interstate travel. They're also banned in many states because it's like a blanket. Mm. So even if it's a super dwarf, it doesn't matter. However, Timor pythons, which are in the same genus, are basically legal everywhere. They're not part of the Lacey Act. They're legal, like places like Florida, New York. You can have a Timor python. So what if they reclassified super dwarfs as their own species? 
Do you realize mm. that suddenly everyone that's gone a life without them? the top of it wide open. Because they live in New York or Florida mm. or, you know what I'm saying? We would be able to import again, which would probably be bad for the snakes because everyone's like, hey, check it out. I found one cheaper, but it's wild caught. and I'm going to keep it as a pet and remove it from a breeding population. But Those anyway, just that's its own to issues. Overcome it's a, it, I mean, it could change way. the whole thing in a lot of ways. And mm. depending on the people who are involved, if you're investing in people who make the industry negative, it would get a lot more negative. If you're investing in people, I'm talking about you guys, if you as a customer are investing in people who make a positive place, it could get a lot more positive. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of exciting for me. I'm always like, you know, let's try it. Yeah, you're always excited yep. about Super Dwarfs. Yep. Um, all right, so some people are asking about the calendar, which is a great reminder. Um, you guys did it today, right? We got the, okay, the big challenge is just figuring out how to get you guys to be able to vote on them. I thought it was done. That'll be to, uh, this week. Ashley said this week, which either means tomorrow or Friday. we got two then days we left. we'll have voting open, so you can vote for your favorite we'll photos. We'll post we a link like 50, on all of our social media like and our website. 50 submissions, I think. 50 some odd submissions, and yep. those are the ones, like a lot of people submitted like a whole bunch of pictures that were one, similar. Then we picked We kind of like grabbed what we thought was the strongest for yep. our calendar and put them in there. So yep. after kind of combing them through, we didn't eliminate anyone that And if they were vertically, we, we did our best to make it work because a calendar has a certain format and it doesn't fit. Yeah, tall so colors. that's like, you know, 50, mid-50s strong stuff. Yep. So we're going to need you guys to vote on that so and we'll get a calendar This week, out. we'll put a... And yeah, I think it would be hilarious if it. we just made it... We're making a custom calendar anyway. Let's just make it like February through February and say, yeah, we procrastinate a little bit. Yep, yep, it's kind yep. of the way. It's kind of the way we we'll want. acknowledge it. <laughs> February through. There's no February. reason to put a January 2022 on there. That's gone and done. And then next year we'll be so good at making calendars that we'll have we'll have it ready for you by the end of the year. How about for January we just put like R.I.P. the past. You know what I mean? Like all the animals that are not dwarves being called dwarves. Goodbye. The very last January. In yeah, this we're calendar. 20 years beyond that. Yep. That would be cool. What if it's just a 10-month calendar? <laughs> because we're so confident that we'll deliver next year. That it'll just have 10 months in it. I don't know about that. I'm not that confident. I'm pretty confident. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, next question. Do you plan on adding UVB lighting to your enclosures? Yep. That's from Tristan Catter. Yes, we do. Tristan Catter asked a multitude of questions. Um, how is your wild-caught Jampeas doing? Any breeding action? Lots of breeding action. Never got fertile eggs out of the female that you're referring to. So, we'll see. Just uh, always, we'll see. She can live here forever yes. and never produce eggs if she wants. You should she start does, submitting your. You should start submitting your pictures early for next year, <laughs> or use this time to improve. Some of you guys could improve your photography skills. We're not going to name names. Some of you guys could improve. It. He said it. And you could use this year to really work on. Are you saying? Are you self-identifying, Nathan? <laughs> no, I, said, I said that was that was cold. Oh, I thought you were pointing at yourself for a second. <laughs> All right. Um, he was something to think about. Something to think about. <laughs> Next one. Um, any advice for those who are serious about breeding super dwarves as a hobby or potentially a business that you kind of covered that one a little bit, but do you have anything to add to so that? Many, you know what? Go back and rewatch. Like there's a part one and part two of how to assemble a breeding, uh, collection. It's got you the know, Avengers based around kind your genetics. Of yeah. It's now. got, yeah. Go, go check that one out. There's a lot of cool musings on that one. You said that one's called assembling. Yep. Your, and then my only other general advice is we're talking about horizontal growth. You know, reach out, grab, you know, cool technologies, innovations and stuff from other industries and figure out how you can apply them in the reptile industry for success. That's what I would love to see. And that's what's going to grow our hobby. Jay Hill Jr. Ganya Gahaka makes a great point. There is 92 of you in the stream and only 58 of you have liked it. That means 40 Ouch. odd of you guys are Well, punks. I have been kind of complaining tonight. So dislike it, but Compl- also like it. <laughs> complaining slash encouraging us. Let's do better, you know, because I, yeah, I really let's think we do can. better, guys. Um, all right, do you want to go grab a snake today? Yeah, I got it right over there. Come here, Nathan. Oh, let's go. We're gonna see Diva. All yeah, right, guys, we're so gonna name that this one. is the part of our show, the very end of it, where we name a snake. So, you guys are gonna throw your name suggestions out. We're gonna show you the snake, then you throw your name suggestions out. The sooner you get it in there, the better your odds of getting it named are. All right, so we already showed this girl off, she is the Annery Platinum, 100% hep purple. All right, hold on. Let me get back She's here. a yearling mm-hmm. female, hand-selected holdback back. of mine. She's really nice. She's super high on the Kalatoa, so she's, and obviously Annery. So she's going very, very silver. You have some Anneries are like super green, 
And she definitely has the green in there, but this is uh, much more of like a light, bright. How's that? All right, yeah, so go ahead and toss your name suggestions eyes. out. Look at those eyes. You don't have to worry those about covering your eyes. Cool. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah, don't look at his eyes. I just don't want to be on film. Oh, look at her yeah. eyes. No paparazzi, please. <laughs> Nathan's very famous in India, and so he's used to dodging cameras. Yeah, right. Bollywood. <laughs> Big Bollywood actor. You can see the, I'm sure you noticed, but you can see the camera thing right there. All right, what do we got for names? All right. It's um, a female. I didn't mention that, I, or maybe I did. It's a female. Um, all right, where do they start? Foxy, Harley, Lilac, Prada, Priscilla, Fancy, Jolton, Roulette, Daisy, Olive, uh, or Olivia, Pandora, Luna, Mercury, not for sale, but NFS. We have one named that. <laughs> oh, man. Holly, Loretta, Foxy, Zelda, Calendar, Bonnie, Anna, Callie, uh, but like California, Cruella, Artemis. Ball, Bollywood, ball, Bollywood, but spelled with Bali, like Indonesia. <laughs> Sasuke, Gouda, cool. Andromeda, Sparkles, Snake, Lovely, Cassidy, Zales, Web, Mira. What do you think? Any, any that grab your attention? Mira, like the Lambo. Kind of like Bollywood. <laughs> Hollywood it is the Mira. That's pretty cool. I thought I like somebody that one knows too. My, somebody knows my personal. Okay, hold on. Business. We're getting a couple more. Cinderpuff, Mercury, Shiva, Muffaletta, Daisy. I don't know. Mira is a good one. That sounds like a cool like girl snake name too. Yep. The Mira. Mira. Are we going with Mira? I like it. Mira. All right, uh, Anthony. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Anthony, go ahead and send an email to Thomas. I'm gonna drop this in here. Thomas at reachoutreptiles.com. Go ahead and send me an email saying that you named the snake. And anybody who's waiting on pictures from the snake, your guys are going to be getting them tonight. <laughs> I'm going to be sending tonight, out a couple says, emails. Yep. We're working late. Yep. We always work late on Wednesdays. But uh, <laughs> we got a couple more minutes. So Ooh. if you guys have any last minute questions. Did um, you finish all the questions no, from the post? No, we didn't. Grab me one. All Quick. right. I Tristan Catter also asked, what's your plans for marbles? Uh, make lots of them, make more of them. I want to thicken up the lines on them by selective breeding. I also want to make more Sunfire Marble stuff. Um, all right, okay. Amy B asked a question. Get ready for this softball question. Are you ready to hold back? Um, yeah, that's, that's a good call. Hold on. Listen, uh, I'm not, not even register. Ugh. We're back. Getting cozy. Nathan, I'm sure you were enjoying being zoomed in on. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got a yearling super dwarf and a two year old dwarf. Mm. Kind of cool. All right. What's the next one? Oh. On. Let's hit it. Hit it. Hit, it, on, hit it. hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. And then we'll go to Patreon. Are we doing breeder level Patreon? Breeder tonight? level Patreon tonight. Right on. Um, oh, also, we have an announcement. Retic Fest. We can officially announce the date. Even Retic though you guys Fest already kind of know. It's going to be here. Uh, it. So this is invitations for personal appearances. If you want to come, uh, you have to be a patron member. Now, you can join at any level. You can jump on Patreon. And join reachoutreptiles.com, but invites are going to be going out to the patrons. If you're like, oh, I hate that, I want you to feed and entertain me for free, I can't feed you, but I would entertain you because we're going to do all kinds of like informational live streams and stuff like that that mm -hmm. you guys can have access to for free. We're going to take tons of video. We actually have, besides Thomas and Aiden, we have a production crew coming yep. out. To cover. They're going to come show me up, film all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, talks and stuff like that. So it's going to be great, and it is July 30th. Um, all right, so you guys got that July 30th. All right, I want to wrap this last question up before we sign off. Okay. Um, are you ready? Okay, Amy B. Get ready for this softball question. Are you ready to hold back, scale up, pun intended, and breed like never before after <laughs> Clint's latest dangerous snakes and their better alternatives in which the better alternative to mainlands are heavily extolled to be dwarf and super dwarf retics, featuring a reach out reptile super dwarf. Cool. I envision the racks being numbered and on a dry, cleaner like elevator conveyor belt that reaches into the third floor open space for the epic <laughs> reach out reptiles remodel, better known as the big reach. That's pretty cool. You know, I haven't actually caught that one yet, so I'm gonna have to go watch. But yeah, Clint's a good guy. I love I love how unbiased he is. He makes me laugh when he says things that are controversial. In a loving way, and you just can't be mad at him. I've never been able to pull that one off. That's why he's magical. And he's has, unhateable, uncancelable. He has unhateable. a way. I'm definitely hateable. That's why he has way more 
uh, subscribers. following us, and he totally deserves oh, it. Oh, yeah. Thank you for making my job difficult. <laughs> uh, we got time for one more question. Um, we would like to breed more, but I want to breed... I There are certain projects we want to... We don't want to just make more. We want to make all the projects to an acceptably small size and then make a bunch because there's not a huge market for giant snakes. So even stuff that have like bigger dwarf bloodlines, where you're talking about stuff that's like 13 and 14 feet and stuff like that, the, the market is, is much smaller. That's why when you take those localities, you know, like some of the ones that were mentioned earlier in the feed that are 13, 14 foot as wild cots, and they're breeding those into morphs, and you're starting at 13, 14 feet and breeding up and trying to call stuff dwarf, that's not the way to go. We want to get all this stuff below 10 feet, and then we'll crank them. Because I think stuff like the couple little uh, high percentage calatoes we showed on the feed tonight, the little male someone was asking about, I mean, that's going to be like a seven-ish foot snake. It's going to be tiny. It's like a big bull snake. It's a great pet for people. Mm -hmm. So I want to make a lot more like that. It, it just takes time to scale up. Sweet. No pun intended. Love you guys. Breeder level patron. We'll see you tonight. The rest of you guys, if you'd hit like on the video, that would be great. Mm -hmm. If you want to join on Patreon, you can get your invite and details about Retick Fest for 2022 this summer in July. We'll see you there. Sweet. Oh, and stay tuned for calendar stuff too. Lots of stuff going on tonight. Bam. Now is the moment where we hope that it doesn't keep recording and we'd say something that will ruin our careers for the rest of our lives. Oh, man. I say that every time right afterwards. Yep. Let's do something like this. <laughs> I totally destroyed oh, was I supposed to hit stop streaming? Hey, you did a really good job uh, interviewing tonight. Did you, you thought not so? Just, not just me, but like hosting the show. Did you enjoy it? I did. I, I feel like this is a better dynamic. Yeah, no. You, you Thank you, I appreciate like it. Better than when you're sitting under, I don't know why. I, it feels like I like being able to look. Like I think sitting at an angle actually creates the... You were more, more like a host slash interviewer than like normally. That's why I felt like more.